All right, everyone, for the sake of time, uh, we're gonna get this started. Uh, I'd like to welcome you all to our Source HIV Counseling and Testing Program informational session. Uh, today, we have Harriet Lane Clinic and Spark Center with us. We have Christopher Reed from Harriet Lane Clinic and we have Katie Evans from Spark, the Spark Center. So they're gonna be joining us just to share a little bit about uh, their programs and what they expect from their uh, counselors and testers, as well as, um, well as as well as to be here to answer any questions you all may have. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so we can start the presentation. All right. Um, and if everybody could see the, the presentation, just kind of give me a thumbs up so I know that we're good to go. All right, perfect, perfect. Uh, okay, so once again, welcome to the Source HIV Counseling and Testing Program Student Informational Session. Uh, my name is Zev Saquon Manka. I'm one of the assistant directors here at the Source Program at John Hopkins University. Um, our mission at Source is to engage the John Hopkins Health Professional Schools and Baltimore communities in mutual beneficial partnerships that promote health and social justice. Um, I really want to uh, highlight the beneficial partnerships and promotion of health and social justice uh, along with collaboration. That's why we have um, our partners here to answer any questions that we might have. Um, just, just to check in with you all real quick, we have some events coming up. Our, we have some ongoing events. Uh, we do uh, National Volunteer Week in April. We have our Tri-Day Schools of Service in April as well. And we have uh, student seminars, workshops, and donation drives that are ongoing. We just wrapped up our Baltimore Week's donation drive. It was a non-perishable goods and canned good drive, and we got a lot of supplies. We are still counting inventory, and we're going to be doing that for a while. So if you uh, contributed to that, I uh, wanna give you all a special shout out. And uh, just a friendly reminder, uh, the HIV counseling and testing program applications are due uh, Tuesday, October 25th. That's coming right, on our, right around the corner, that's next week. Uh, so if you have questions or you're just not sure, now's the time to figure out if you are going to be applying or not. Um, so real quick, just to give you guys, a, a or you all just a brief uh, introduction, uh, the Harriet Lane uh, Clinic, is uh, located on North Wool 200 North Wool Street on the first floor. Um, the Harriet Lane Clinic is um, it's on in, it's in, on the East Baltimore campus of John Hopkins University, so it's literally right here, right between Fayette and Orleans Street. Um, and, and and then uh, Spark is right at 908 Washington Boulevard. It's accessible accessible by the MTA the yellow bus line, and there's also free parking available. So both are very accessible, and they're not too far away from they're either right here or not too far away. Uh, I'm going to uh, give give up the uh, host position right now and pass it along to Harriet Lane Clinic, just to kind of, uh, or to Christopher, just to kind of explain what Harriet Lane Clinic is doing and uh, what they'll be expecting of you all. Awesome, thank you. Um, so I'm Chris Reed. I'm one of the risk reduction coordinators over at Harriet Lane Clinic at the Harriet Lane Clinic. So primarily what our clinic is, is a adolescent clinic. So we serve from birth to 25, as you can see there. Uh, your primary, primary <clears throat> uh, population will be 13 to about 24, uh, 25 uh, sometimes, but normally by 24, we try to migrate them into adult care. And with Harriet Lane Clinic, you will be asked to do HIV testing. And with our HIV testing program, we do require you to be trained in rapid HIV testing, which is, <clears throat> of course, the mouse swab. So for all of our testers, we do ask, again, that you do are, are prior, um, able to do that testing. As well as the HIV testing, we, are, uh, we do supply a lot of uh, pregnancy prevention, um, as well as contraceptive options and contraceptive uh, risk reduction as well, as well as sexual health risk reduction and <clears throat> with a lot of our patients. Then we also get into a 
uh, our PrEP program, which is PrEP is for youth. And if you aren't aware what PrEP is, PrEP is pre-exposure prophylaxis. It is a HIV prevention, uh, HIV prevention pill that you take once a day, every day that helps prevent you from contracting HIV. Um, we do have patients that do come into the clinic that are eligible for PrEP. Um, pretty much, uh, we like to say that everyone is eligible for PrEP. Even if you aren't thinking about it, everyone who is sexually active or having unprotected sex um, should consider PrEP. Uh, so that is uh, one of our programs that we do have um, that you will be working on. And with that program, you will be required to contact patients that are a part of the PrEP program, having them come in for their scheduled appointments, just checking to make sure that they are uh, taking their medication as needed. Um, as well as our PrEP is for Youth program, we do have our Voices program as well. And with PrEP is for Youth and Voices, they are a little bit similar, but a little bit different as well. With our Voices program, which stands for Virtual Online <clears throat> Integrated Sexual Health Services, uh, pretty much what that is, you will be conducting or helping and, and assisting uh, patients to link them with the clinic online as well as having them do HIV testing in their homes. So we do send them a kit or they do order kits through I Want the Kit, which do, does supply them with a rapid HIV test as well as STI testing. And with that, uh, you will get a list of patients that have registered for those tests uh, with, of course, like their name, maybe their email or uh, a phone number to call them and just give them an overview of like, hey, you know, my name is such and such, I'm here to, navigate you through uh, your HIV testing. Is there anything that you need help with? And through a lot of these programs with our HIV risk reduction program, as well as PrEP is for Youth and as well as Voices, we do supply other underlining services such as education, um, uh, food, housing, um, and a plethora of other things as well. And I think that may be it. Uh, hopefully that like went over a lot of things. Um, with our program, we do have morning shifts available as well as evenings, uh, more afternoon evenings. So that is from morning from about maybe nine to 12. And then the other shift in the evening is from about one to five. And both of those shifts, you may be required to do testing. Um, both of those shifts or some one may require you to do a little bit more outreach. Um, as well as speaking of outreach, we do have opportunities to do outreach in, in the community. I know recently we just did a outreach event uh, where we had storytellers come in and tell their stories and, and their journeys amongst a lot of other people. So we did have people come out and enjoy that as well. We've had events from uh, house balls. Um, if you're not familiar with ball culture, that is a culture that is a part of the LGBT community where people in the community come together to perform. Um, if you've seen Legendary, if you've seen Pose, then you know what the house ball community is, uh, as well as other events, uh, state uh, fairs, health fairs, and collaborating with other institutions to put together bigger events. But I believe that is it. All right. Well, thanks so much, Christopher, for, for that. and. Um, Everybody watching, uh, just keep in mind that we will have a we will all have an opportunity to ask questions at the end of this, um, as well as if you want to just throw any of your questions in the chat. I cannot see it, but we will address them as soon as we open up for for questions. Um, so moving right along, uh, I want to introduce uh, Katie Evans of the Spark Center. Uh, I'll, I'll relinquish my host title again to to you, Katie, uh, if you want to take it away. Sounds good. Um, hi, everybody. Thanks for being here today. My name is Katie. I am the managing director of the Spark Center. Um, the Spark Center started as a research intervention out of the Johns Hopkins School of Public Health in 2017. Um, that study ran from 2017 to 2020. And even during that time, and definitely since then, we've kind of grown far beyond what was originally imagined. So Spark started as a drop-by center for folks who are engaged in sex work, drug use, any other element of the street economy. Um, and then we had a supplemental nighttime outreach program that went out to different sex work strolls in South and Southwest Baltimore City. Um, we do very specifically only work with people who identify as non-men. So that includes cis women, trans women, non-binary folks, gender queer, basically everybody but cis men. Um, and that is 
done intentionally to maintain both the center and this the van as safe spaces um, for non-men. So uh, since COVID, we've pretty drastically changed our service model. And instead of focusing on drop-in services with the other services as a wraparound, the other outreach services, now we're primarily a um, delivery-based harm reduction program. So we're a syringe service program, an overdose response program. We distribute um, safer sex supplies, safer drug use equipment for all routes of administration. Um, we also have moved all of our medical services to both be hosted at the center and through our delivery program. So what that looks like is when we're making deliveries, sometimes we have, um, you know, we'll be delivering your condoms and your lube and your syringes and your snorting kit and your hygiene kit and your wound care kit. And then you might also get an HIV test with that if that's something you'd like. Sometimes that's something that we do with folks if they're open to it. If they're not open to it, then we just give them the test and let them do it on their own. Um, we do the same thing with hepatitis C testing. And then similarly to the Harriet Lane Clinic, we offer our STI testing mostly through the I Want the Kit program. Um, but given that most of our participants don't have access to phone or internet on a regular basis, we get the swabs directly from I Want the Kit, and then we hand them to people as we're doing deliveries, and they swab themselves and give us the swabs right back, and then we take them to the lab, and then we can follow up and deliver medication and things like that. Um, so Spark is staffed by... Um, a very nice collection of folks. We have people who focus more on things like syringe services, the people who focus on community health, outreach, case management. Um, we also have two new nurse practitioners provided by the Baltimore City Health Department. So for the folks that end up at Spark, um, you'll find that our healthcare services are essentially like a mini Baltimore City Health Department clinic that's located here and gets to work a little bit more nimbly than sometimes folks do in like larger bureaucratic settings. Um, and the HIV testing that we do in-house is all through them. So folks who come to SPARC will get trained in SPARC outreach, harm reduction, kind of the culture of our program. Um, but then in terms of like clinical procedures and things like that, all of those belong to Baltimore City Health Department. And you'll also become a volunteer of the health department in that sense. Um, and the roles of students in this program will be working both at the center for people who come by for drop-by services to offer and promote HIV testing and also um, to participate in some of the mobile shifts to make HIV testing um, more at the front of some of the work that we do. Um, it used to be a bigger piece of it, but since COVID, all of our priorities have, have jumbled around. So that's that's part of our excitement and being part of this program this year is to be able to focus on that again. I think that's it. Nice. Well, thank you so much, Katie. Um, so we've heard from the Harriet Lane Clinic and we've heard from Spark Center. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, you you all heard a lot of the differences in the, and, and all as well as the similarities. I kind of just wanted to illustrate some of them here for you all to see um, in the bullet points. Another thing that I really wanted to highlight is that um, is the the shifts at Harriet Lane Clinic. It'll be uh, as 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 it was stated before. It'll be like mostly afternoon with some morning testing, and then participants must be available to complete at least one shift per week. So I really want to uh, make that clear to everyone that at the Harriet Lane Clinic, participants must be available to complete at least one shift per week. And then um, at Spark at the Spark Center, uh, shifts are available five days a week. And um, participants must be available to complete two shifts per month. So just remember at Spark Center, participants must be available to complete two shifts per month. And Christopher and Katie, if I've, uh, that's, the information is accurate, just to, just to make sure to just, okay, got it. So yes, yeah, so uh, once again, Harriet Lane Clinic, participants must be available for, uh, to complete one shift per week. At the Spark Center, participants must be available to complete two shifts per month. Um, and that is that is the scope of it. Um, moving right along to how you will all be prepared to do the counseling and testing. Uh, so keep in mind that Spark, Spark Center and uh, the Harriet Lane Clinic will have their own on-site orientation and onboarding process. So you'll have your own training there, there as well. But as far as 
uh, the academic and Hopkins side, uh, what you'll be doing is the e-learning uh, training course and it's online. So it's all, it's the, all the content is self-guided and you'll be going through six, uh, six module learning course along with five supplemental sessions um, by the Maryland Department of Health. So once again, this is all online and it's uh, self, self-guided and you go at your own pace. Our only stipulation is that you have to complete the online training by Tuesday, November 15th. So if you're on the line right now and you don't think that you can complete these 11 modules, because it's the six e-learning and the five supplemental sessions, if you don't think that you can complete the 11 modules by the 15th, uh, please do not plan to apply. We're really, we're, we, it's, uh, it's, uh, there's actually, there's a lot of applications. So we're trying to make sure that everybody is seen. And if you don't think you can commit to the shifts or to uh, the training process, uh, please do not apply. If you have any questions about it, we'll be happy to walk you through it and help you as much as possible. Um, once again, just for the additional information, I, I already let you all know that there'll be site-specific training so that they'll be doing their own onboardings. Uh, we will be conducting uh, quarterly reflections, meaning that you will be, uh, quarterly reflections, uh, it's, there's like a structure to it um, to see like why you're doing, what's, what the need is why you're doing it, what you're learning, um, what, you're plan what you're planning to learn, um, what, what you're going to take away from it versus what the impact that you're leaving, just uh, things like that. Um, you'll also be, sorry, I just gotta move this real quick. Uh, so there's also, there also may be opportunities to continue into the summer and the future. Um, that really depends on your performance and the, the networks and the relationships that you make once you're at those sites. Um, There'll be, there'll be a, a student site leader there to, to, that will be the point of contact. And then also we have, uh, you'll have to work on scheduling like when, you, when, the act, when your actual shifts will be. Um, moving right along, application information, uh, here, here it is. Um, you can select sites that you're comfortable and interested in working at. Please, if you don't feel comfortable working with any populations, please do not pick those sites. But at the same time, I would also encourage you to um, Get get familiar with populations that you're planning on serving as as you get your um, your degrees. Um, also, just rem remember that this is a highly highly competitive opportunity. There's going to be a lot of applications in, and we can only select a certain amount of people. We wish we could get everyone in, but we just don't have the capacity. So uh, please take your application seriously. Um, the the process is there's a panel. The, the, I'm sorry. So uh, the process is that they, they, we review the applicants with the community partners. Um, it depends on your written application and your resume. Um, you're not going to get feedback on why or why not uh, candidates or why you or why not you were not selected. And uh, we also have to identify like al alternate candidates as well. Um, so, so uh, the application deadline once again is Tuesday, October 25th. Uh, you have until 11:59 p.m. to get it in, but I highly suggest you you do it before Tuesday, just in uh, because there is there just in case you have to like get any additional information, take a look at the application. Uh, here is the site right here that you can uh, get the application and all the information to the HIV counseling and testing site. Um, we're also going to give you provide all this information to you all as well if you don't already have it, so do not worry about it. Um, also, just if you want to stay up to date about our about our upcoming opportunities, uh, this this opportunity, the HIV counseling testing uh, program, like so many others, were advertised in our uh, weekly newsletter. It's called the Source Weekly Service Scoop. So if you're not already sub uh, subscribed, please do so. Also, join our social medias. And if you have any uh, questions or just want to uh, link link up with a Source staff member, you can always email source at jhu.edu. Um, so at this time, I want to open up the floor for some questions from uh, the, the audience that we might have for um, Harriet Lane Clinic or Spark, the Spark program. So um, I'm checking the chat now, but if, any, if, if anyone has any questions, feel free to uh, unmute yourselves and, and ask away. Do not be shy. You can also drop your questions in the chat box as well, and we will address them. Um, hi, um, thank you everybody for speaking with us. I, I have harder, if that's okay, for questions. Um, one of
or is it you wait until the following academic year? I'm sorry. I think your I'm think your your audio went out. Can you can you say that one more time? Yeah. Sorry. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Okay. I was just wondering um, how long the shifts are at each clinic, and if you're able to um, kind of join one of the clinics later on semester, or if you have to wait for the next academic year to reapply. Um, so for Harry and Lane Clinic, the, again, the shifts are um, normally a lot of our patients, I mean, not a patients, a lot of the sort of students that come in, sometimes they're still in school. So it goes by their school year. So when the summer or any kind of holidays hit, um, that's normally when they go on vacation and things like that. But again, there are opportunities for you to continue your um, source or continue volunteering with us afterwards. So there's really kind of no time limit. You know, you just want, we just want, we would just want you to let us know like, hey, I'm interested in coming back during the summer. Is that possible? And we're, we're able to do that for you. Um, again, that will also depend on your schedule, what you have available, because I know that we do still have a couple of source students that have finished the source program, but are still volunteering with us. I did miss part of the question, but my understanding is that you're asking about the schedule for the program during the school year and then also when the school year ends. Is that right? Oh, you cut out again. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Do you want to put it in the chat? Yeah, that'd be okay. Cool. Thank you. Sorry about that. I can have chime in here on so, this question as well. Yeah, um, I was about to, I was about to say, do you want me to like I do you want me to provide the the specific? We have the specific information that you all provided. If if you want, if it's okay if I share that. Perfect, perfect. All right. So for um for Harriet Lane Clinic, uh, participants must be available once again to complete one shift per week. Um, the in clinic volunteer shifts are Monday through Fridays, one p.m. to five p.m. There are virtual and phone follow-up shifts, and they are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And I'm going to put all this in the in the chat for you as well. This information is is all available during uh, if you go online and look at our look at our uh, the application process as well. Um, and then as far as Spark Center, um, I can speak to that if it's easier. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, um, so we have delivery shifts on Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. On Tuesday and Thursday, they happen from about 12 to four. And on Friday, it happens from about 10 to one, but it would still be probably close to three hours or closer to four hours by the time like the van gets loaded, comes back and all that jazz. Um, and then we're also gonna have shifts in the center, um, which can be a little bit more flexible, but generally speaking, we're open from 11 to four Mondays to Thursdays, but I wouldn't anticipate that people would work longer than four hours at a time um, because that's part of how the program runs. Um, so yeah, there's definitely some, some flexibility within center uh, opportunities, whereas the delivery shifts are a lot more fixed. And to answer the other part of your question, the HIV counseling and testing program is only offered once per year. So it's join now, be selected as an HIV counselor now, go through training. You likely won't actually begin to start your HIV counseling and testing um, until a little bit later in November. Um, you'll have some on-site training to do at each of your organizations. Sometimes they do some shadowing. It's a little bit different at each site and you'll get to start working. Then there'll be a winter break. And then the rest of the year, you're engaged with the organization. And as like Chris mentioned, we ask in the application, will you be available over winter break? Will you be available in the summer? Neither of those two things are required. However, I think the organizations like to look at it and it becomes an option. If you're around, they've got this time and space to do it. But your students, we recognize that and you're not required to do so. But we only offer the program the opportunity once per academic year. Yep. And I put the shifts in the uh, chat as well. There was another question in the chat about the schedule, and I'll answer it for Spark. The question was, are there shifts in the evenings or on weekends? 
um, and not currently. Um, we have had shifts in the evenings in the past, but right now we have grown a lot. <laughs> and so we're keeping everything to like our full-time schedule. So as of right now, we don't have any opportunities outside of Monday to Friday, nine to five, that kind of time frame. Yes, and the same kind of goes for us. Uh, sometimes we do have outreach events that are sometimes on the weekends that they're not required uh, at all, but you can volunteer to be a part of those outreach events that are on the weekends or uh, normally after your shift during the week. So the next question that we have is for both uh, Harriet Lane Clinic and Spark Center. Uh, are you able to choose whether to whether you can do a, a in clinic uh, or a phone follow up shift? That was for Harriet Lane Clinic. Like, meaning, can you do one or the other? Can you choose which ones that you do? And then for Spark, uh, are you able to choose to be in the center or to do outreach specifically? So I, I believe the question is asking: Do you get to choose what you do, or do you do both, or what's the scope? Uh, so for Harriet Lane, we pretty much go off of your schedule. So if you are only available in the mornings, um, then that is a possibility that we would just put you on, put you in in the mornings unless something changes. In the meantime, with your schedule or anything like that, we can put you back in the evenings. Uh, but I, uh, it is possible. We have had people that are like, "Hey, I'm." available in the mornings on Tuesday, but I'm available in the afternoons on Wednesday. Can I do a morning and an afternoon? Depending if we're not over, um, if there's not a lot of people on the shift on Wednesday, then it's a possibility that you can do either or, or do both if you like. So for Spark, um, I would anticipate a variety of roles. Um, for context, um, with the delivery program, when we started in early 2020, we had nine households. By the end of that summer, we had 100, and now we do 300 every week, and our team is only seven people. <laughs> um, so everybody wears a lot of hats, so I would assume pretty comfortably that based on your availability would determine where you are for the most part. Like if you're only available on Mondays and Wednesdays, then it's not super likely that you'll be on a delivery shift. The one thing I forgot to mention is that we do have some medical focused outreach shifts. So if we don't have any participants on the schedule for a certain period of time while somebody's there, then we'll go out and do some either home-based care or community-based care. So by home-based, I mean like we have a list of people and we go and check on them and be like, hey, you talked about wanting to get hep C treatment for three weeks in a row. Let's start you today. Um, that's a bad example because we have to do a blood draw for that. But we either follow up with people or sometimes we just go to hot spots where we know there's a lot of like activity um, and see who needs healthcare. Um, so there are some, I say that to say there are some mobile outreach opportunities that don't happen on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, like described, but they're not consistent. Um, so if you're somebody who's only available on Monday, it might be that you work in the center for two weeks on a Monday, and then the following week, you might be on a mobile outreach shift. Um, I will say that people who are uh, most successful at Spark are people who like to go with the flow. So some people really thrive in that, like, now this, and over here, and something is shifting. <laughs> if you're somebody who really likes routine and structure and you want that consistency, we're probably not going to be the best site for you. Um, just to be frank. Um, any other questions? All right. Well, if we don't have any other questions, uh, before we wrap up, I just want to go over the timeline real quick, just of how all this works. Um, Tuesday, October 25th is the deadline for student applications once again. Um, then there'll be a brief application review pr process followed by um, a live session where uh, both Spark Center and Harriet Lane Clinic will see, select their uh, participants during that live student session. So uh, this all moves pretty quickly. So just make sure that you all get your applications in by the 25th and um, hopefully we can uh, get 
you all at the placements that you desire and we can leave a positive impact on the, the East ba or on the Baltimore community. Um, so if there's no more questions, uh, feel free to ask any follow-up questions that you might have. You can email uh, me personally, or you can email source at, j, uh, at jhu.edu. Um, we we're all here and happy to answer your questions. And I look forward to seeing your applications on the 25th. All right, so thank you to everyone. Special thank you to uh, Katie and Chris for taking the time out to explain all of this to us. Um, thank you once again, and have a great day, everyone. Take care. You take care. Thanks, everyone.